This shortest path problem actually comes up in a more general way um, quite often, quite often. And, and it's important enough that we uh, will take the time here to discuss this generalization. Um, but in order to understand the generalization, we have to have something a little bit more general than a graph. Um, so we're going to introduce right now the notion of an edge-weighted graph. An edge-weighted graph is often just called a, a weighted graph, but it's more specifically should be called a, an edge-weighted graph. Okay, so what is that? What's an edge-weighted graph? Well, it's, it's not complicated. An edge-weighted graph consists of a graph together with an assignment of a positive number to each of the edges of the graph. Okay? The positive number that's assigned to an edge is said to be the edge's weight. Okay? Um, this sort of thing comes up naturally in all sorts of different contexts. And um, sometimes the weight of an edge, you know, corresponds really to a sense of distance between vertices in a real-world application or something like that. But, but sometimes it's not really distance. It's something else, maybe the cost or something or whatever it might be. Um, we refer to this number as a weight um, to cover this generically. But we want to think of it in some sense as being a distance, okay? And so in this context of edge-weighted graphs, it's really quite useful to revise our sense of the length of a path, okay? In the, in the ordinary graph situation, we say the length of a path is the number of edges involved, right? But in this situation with edge-weighted graphs, we're going to think instead that the length of a path is going to be the sum of the weights of the edges along that path. Okay, so here's an example of an edge weighted graph, right? The edge from A to E has weight 1.3. The edge from B to D, the edge connecting B and D, has weight 7.5, and so on. If we think of these weights as distances, which, which might or might not be appropriate, in, in some contexts it would be, um, what would be the shortest path to get from A to B? Okay, well, if you look at it carefully, you can see that you could go from A to E, and the weight of that edge is 1.3, you can go from E to G, the weight of that edge is 5.6. You could go from G to C, the weight of that edge is 4.4. From C to D, the weight of that edge is 0 0.2. From D to B, um, the weight of that edge is 7.5. So these, these edge weights all um, tally up to 19.0, okay? And we would say that that is the length of the path, okay? Now this is at variance with um, our earlier definition. When we didn't have any weights, when we did not have edge weights, then we would say, in that, in that context, we would say that the length of the path from A to E, E to G, G to C, C to D, D to B, that that would be a path of length five, okay? Yeah, so hopefully that makes sense to you. If you don't have any edge weights, then the length of a path is simply the number of edges, right? But if you do have edge weights, then when you talk about the length of a path, you want to be summing up the lengths of the edges, the weights of the edges. Okay? So, so basically, a, a graph without edge weights is the same thing as having a graph with edge weights where all of the edge weights are one, if you think about it, right? If all of the edge weights were one, then the length of a path would be the same, whichever whichever sense you you, you mean it. Um, we now come to another variation on the notion of a graph, a, a different variation, um, but a very important variation known as a directed graph, okay, and also called a digraph. Um, and here are the ideas. Um, not, not 
really to assign weights to, to edges, but rather to direct them, to orient them from one vertex to another vertex, to point them, okay? Um, so in this context, we speak of directed edges. And uh, another name for a directed edge is an arc. Don't ask me why people have been calling them arcs for a long time. You could also call them arrows, I suppose, but the mathematically preferred language is um, arc. Okay, so an arc is a directed edge. When you draw a picture of a digraph, you, you of course, uh, do draw it as an arrow. So here's an example <coughs> of a directed graph. I'm taking my previous graph and, and altering it a bit. Um, so the edge from A to E has been directed now from A to E. The, the, the arrowheads are a little bit small. Hopefully you can see um, there's an arrowhead at the vertex E. So the, so the arc from A to E um, is represented here by drawing an arrow that points from A to E. And similarly, there's an arc from D to B, which is represented by drawing an arrow from D to B. Okay? Um, one thing that might have caught your attention by now is originally I had an edge connecting, an undirected edge connecting E and G, and now I've actually introduced two different arcs, right? So I have an arc that goes from E to G, and I have another arc that goes from G to E. So I want to point out that this sort of thing is absolutely allowed. Um, it seems like we're violating a rule that we set previously that we, we're not allowed to have multiple edges between the same two vertices. And what I'm saying now is in the case of digraphs, uh, we violate that silly, right? We could have two, two edges between the same two vertices, but if we do that, they have to be oriented in the opposite way, in opposite sense, okay? So that's what I just said. We're allowed to have an arc from E to G and a different arc from G to E, but that's it. We're not allowing um, multiple arcs from E to G. We're not allowing multiple arcs from G to E, so on. Could allow multiple arcs, but um, it's not important for our discussion, so we won't, we won't even consider it. Okay, um, so we basically dealt with digraphs in, in a visual way. Arcs became arrow, I mean, became, you know, edges with arrows now. Um, but we want to be careful with the mathematically rigorous definition. And so here what we have to do is we have to re, we have to change, uh, things so that with the undirected ordinary graph, an edge was technically a set of, of two vertices. But now, the order in which those vertices are specified matters. So instead of having, you know, the edge between U and V being officially the set U comma V, curly brackets U comma V curly bracket, um, instead of that, we will now make an arc an ordered pair, okay? And the idea of ordered pair is part of set theory but it's really this idea that you were already introduced to in high school algebra, okay? In high school algebra, you, you had the notion of an ordered pair of numbers. And ordered pairs of numbers, like parenthesis, 3, comma 5, parenthesis, you know, is used um, for Cartesian coordinates, okay? And, and all of that. Well, this is the same sense of an ordered pair, it's just that we're no longer thinking about ordered pair of numbers, we're thinking about ordered pair of vertices, okay? So the ordered pair u comma v, parenthesis u comma v, parenthesis, that's, that's exactly what we mean by the arc that connects, that goes from u to v, right? And parenthesis u comma v, parenthesis, 
is not the same as parentheses v comma u. The order in which you write the two parts matters. Okay. So here it is real real quick. The the here is the technically correct description of the directed graph that we were looking at in the previous slide. Um, it consists of the vertices A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it consists of the arc, an arc from A to E, that's parenthesis A comma E, parenthesis, and an arc from B to C, parenthesis B comma C, parenthesis, and so forth. Okay? Yeah, it really matters in this game whether you use parentheses or curly brackets. Um, there are some cases where you really have to be careful about notation, and this is one of them. In set theory, in what we're doing here, this mathematical rigor, it's important whether you use parentheses or curly brackets. Curly brackets, when you're not interested in the order of the stuff inside, and parentheses when you when it does matter what the order is okay so now that we have directed graphs um, as a generalization of graphs or a uh, variation on graphs well then it makes sense that we should talk about um, the variation on the idea of a path so we in the case of a directed graph we speak about directed paths and you can pretty much guess what this is. It's the same as the idea of a path, except when you follow a directed edge, you have to follow it in the direction that the arrow points, okay? In the forward direction. So, for example, in this graph that, in, sorry, in this digraph that we're considering, there's a directed path from A to E that gets you from A to F by going from A to E to G to C to E to F. Okay? I'm not claiming that's the shortest path. Obviously, I'm using the vertex E twice here. Um, but it's a legitimate directed path because there is an arc from A to E. There's an arc from E to G. There's an arc from G to C. An arc from C to E. So I can hook those together and get the path from A to F. There's another directed path that goes from B back to B. Okay? It may seem silly. It's certainly not the shortest path, but there's a legitimate directed path that goes from B to C to E to G to C to D to B. Um, this second directed path that began and ended at the same vertex B is said to be a closed directed path, okay? Any directed path that begins and ends at the same vertex is said to be a closed directed path. And similarly, when you're dealing with ordinary graphs, um, a path that begins and ends at the same vertex is said to be a closed path. I want to point out uh, something that um, sometimes worth sometimes worth thinking about, um, and that is the idea that you can you can easily convert any ordinary graph into a directed graph that essentially captures the same spirit, right? If you start with an ordinary graph <clears throat> and you replace each of its edges with a pair of arcs, okay. And a, a pair of arcs, one of the arcs, the, the, the two arcs going in opposite directions, um, then you, then you can, then you've converted an ordinary graph to a directed graph. Okay? And every path in the ordinary graph would correspond to a directed path in the directed graph. Right? It, it's pretty easy to see. Okay, it's not going to be particularly important to us though. Okay, so for example, in the ordinary graph, you might have an edge from you know, an edge connecting A and B, and then when you think about the directed graph, you'd wind up with a pair of arcs, one from A to B and another arc from B to A. 